thought that for a very long time. I was educated in the 1960s and 70s, and uh, it was not a good experience. Do as you're told, keep your head down, listen. When we got to 2010, it was very clear to us that we weren't changing the school quickly enough, and we weren't focusing our school accurately and passionately enough on learning. I've believed all my life that whether we like it or not as teachers, young people make choices. What we wanted to do was make sure that we designed learning around the authenticity of those choices and that we designed it in such a way that young people were absolutely entitled to make choices about when they learned, how they learned and where they learned. So, with that backdrop, our teachers were told there were three things that they needed to get really, really good at. The first of those things was about designing learning for individual young people. And that begins by getting to know those young people. Our model is based absolutely on developing the strongest possible relationships between young people and between the adults who are designing the learning for them. I started looking for what became the iPad in 2005. I had to put a resource in their hand that they could decide how they activated the resources that were out there in the world around us. Uh, there was a tremendous synergy between the product and what we were trying to do in terms of designing the curriculum, which is why we bought all the youngsters' iPads um, when they uh, came back into school in September 2011. So we're now in a position where we have three year groups who've been working on this new curriculum, but we've also had four year groups who weren't in that new curriculum, two who have left us, they got the best outcomes the school has ever had for the last two years, and two that are still in our school today. And we've seen some interesting changes in the way that they're learning which I think have been caused by a shift in people's pedagogy in the lower school and also um, an opportunity that I think the device presents if you're willing to shift at a pace that's maybe a little bit quicker than we managed uh, in our eight years prior to having those devices. So the idea that they can dip in and dip out and set their own agenda and it doesn't have to be linear, it can be however they want to, and they can delve in and out of resources. Uh, and I also can use a whole range of different things, including things that I had previously that I've uh, kind of reinvented and zhuzhed up um, and I've kind of put into the platform. Uh, one of the biggest things for me is actually doing things uh, where I actually create a resource. Um, and so creating uh, things that are actually bespoke for the learners that are in front of me. So dealing with whatever is going on in their learning and adapting and creating some text that work for what's going on in my classroom at any one given time. Um, I really enjoy doing it. Um, maybe I've got a, I don't know, a secret passion for publishing, I don't know. Um, but I really enjoy doing it, so it's something that I feel quite proud of. Um, and I enjoy uh, the opportunity <coughs> to write, and I don't think it does the kids any harm to see me writing. Um, usually when they sit and do a coursework essay, I would write a coursework essay too, um, which they always find quite amusing, um, and then we grade them. And obviously I get very upset if they don't grade me where I think I should be. Um, one of the biggest things I've also found is in and around um, how the device itself it needs to be used intuitively and um, if we're being honest, having the opportunity to look at email and to look at the wider scope that comes with any device, there are opportunities to pursue different avenues and what I've been doing recently is I've been creating kind of brain break selections of apps. Um, and what that's really come from is the fact that I had um, a rather strange obsession with Bakery Story when I reached 100 levels and should have really stopped way before that um, and had to because it was becoming a bit of an addiction. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to create uh, screenshots that I share with all of the learners and then they can kind of see my suggestions of maybe going on an intriguing journey outside of what they think is going to be linked into, for example, Shakespeare and find other things that they can use. Um, it's really been interesting seeing how they like to collaborate and how they like to in kind of involve one another. They're always trying to find different things and different apps to kind of do different, different elements of their learning. Being able to have a question in my head and be able to research and answer instantly through my iPad has made me even more curious and, in, and has encouraged me to develop a real enjoyment for learning. In my learning for Honeywood, the iPad has enabled me to reflect on my learning and develop a critical view of the work I produce. I'm a keen dancer and at Honeywood we start our GCSEs in year 9. I chose to study dance and have found the iPad an invaluable tool in evaluating and improving my dance and choreographic style. Being able to feel work as it develops and watch it back 
has made me think more about the technique of my dance and the performance of the work. For example, in Unit 4 of my GCSE dance, we take a motif, a series of moves, interlinked, and adapt it and develop it into something original, something organic, based on the original. In the past, I would have found this difficult to do without borrowing a video camera, finding a PC to watch it back on, time-consuming and limited. In our first film at Hollywood, as a cohort seven, I was set the task, along with the rest of the cohort, to discover why Lucasville could be a world heritage site. For our question, we were asked to produce a project based on Lucasville. <coughs> this meant developing research skills, creative skills, and collaboration skills, as we worked in teams to produce our project. Throughout the term, we unknowingly developed the skills to become good historians and geographers. Without focusing on one subject, we managed to touch on all of them within our project research. It will be no surprise to you that I didn't really enjoy maths at primary school. At primary, we were given worksheets and worked as a class to complete the same piece of work. This wasn't always challenging and in some cases it was boring. OK, so we were given multi-link on occasion, but it didn't really inspire me to want to explore the world of maths. I had no appreciation of how maths is reflected in the world around me. At Honeywood, we were given the opportunity to explore maths in a completely different way. Using our iPads, we were given access to all levels of maths learning. Our teachers have developed activities, worksheets and help sheets that allow us to learn maths at our own pace. Each learner in a class will be working on a topic and a level within that topic that intrigues and inspires them. So do I get away about learning how to do algebra? Not a chance. Our teachers monitor our progress and we set objectives to achieve in a time frame. If I haven't tackled algebra in a couple of lessons, my teacher will check to see why. We worked on graphio to plan the different scenarios and I found using pictures and words really helpful. iBooks are excellent for giving us the chance to interact with the text. And because we are using them in iTunes U, all of our notes are kept on our Apple ID. <laughs> Let me give you an example. This half term we have been looking at Romeo and Juliet, so we have been analysing different extracts and making our own notes. Madame et Monsieur, bonjour et bienvenue à notre présentation. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our presentation. I never knew learning French would be so exciting. Language was a complete surprise to me. Being at primary, learning to count to ten in French really didn't show me how interesting a second language could be to learn. Coming to Hollywood School, I discovered a whole world that I never knew was there. The ability to speak to someone in another language, read magazines, watch films, listen to songs, all in French was a challenge, but exciting and interesting. Everyone at Hollywood has a second language all the way through its GCSEs. Being able to understand the greater world around us through language is an essential skill in the modern world. At Honeywood, in the first two years, we were given an insight into French and German. In cohort nine, when we start our GCSEs, we choose at least one language and have the option of Spanish as well. The iPad is critical to the way we learn French at Honeywood. Our teachers email through PowerPoints that contain the classwork for the day. We refer to this throughout the learning session and use it as a reference point after the session is finished. So science is about research and intrigue, but I still need to be able to gain a GCSE grade in my science. My iPad is an invaluable tool for active revision. The access to sites such as BBC Bite Size, Eschool, and at home, YouTube, prove very helpful in being able to see science working in videos and online PowerPoints, all at my fingertips. Also at my fingertips is access to email. Our teachers email a PowerPoint at the start of each lesson and are on hand to respond to email whenever I have any questions or get stuck on a topic. Being able to review the PowerPoint at home to reinforce my understanding has helped me to get to grips with more challenging topics in science. Being given the choice of how to research and investigate science has created a world of intrigue for me. Would I have taken the trouble to pick up an encyclopedia to find out how crude oil is used? I'm not sure I would, but easy access through my iPad has given me the incentive to want to learn more. Thank you for listening to our learning journeys.